Now I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Tina Schlingmann. Tina holds a PhD in material sciences and has been now with Deutsche Bahn since May of this year. She's a, definitely a, a brilliant materials expert and an experienced strategist in AM. And uh, for Deutsche Bahn, she identifies and evaluates the relevant materials for rail and much, much more, but she will talk about this herself. Big hand of applause, please. Thank you, Stephanie, for that very kind introduction. <coughs> Starting with, oh no, that's one, yeah. Starting with the presentation, I'm talking about uh, how Deutsche Bahn is changing the way to 3D printing. So my idea today is to take you on a little trip, how we changed our tracks. But before we can start our trip, I would like to talk with you about our situation at the moment, about the situation where the Deutsche Bahn is in. So me, we move in the balancing act between old and new technology, which you see here. It's an infrastructure, in vehicles, and an interior. And now you might be wondering how can 3D printing helping us to handle that challenge. So we are changing tracks towards 3D printing in the applications. And in the following slides, I want to show you some of our business cases to handle that challenge I showed you before. Our main um, areas we are f uh, focusing on are spare parts, our production parts, and prototypes. But having always this big goal of increasing the availability, um, we are focusing very much on spare parts. Optimization of refurbishment process. Here you see our first business case, which is a modular transport system for intake valves. And we printed or we've printed this system by SLS um, in the PA6. And by printing that tooling, um, it helps us to, to uh, it helps us for the refurbishment process. So before we had this cardboard um, system where the uh, intake valves were in and we need to remove them from the cardboard to, for the refurbishment process. But with the new printed tooling, which you see here in the corner and also on the right side, it's possible that we use the tooling for the whole process. A typical other railway uh, application is, uh, you can see here, it's parts in the switch cabinet. So these parts, especially it's an SSE plug bla base plate, <laughs> printed in uh, PA12. Um, it's a very, very good business case because uh, by printing this part, we avoid the stand, uh, we avoid that uh, uh, elec electronic locomotives are standing still. And that was the case for 100 trains. A uh, very nice old steam locomotive. You've also seen in Stephanie's presentation before, and it's a use case uh, or a business case from Deutsche Bahn. So uh, with 3D printing, new technology um, meets the old technology. And uh, we've printed the turbine blade wheels, but not only removing one blade and printing one blade, no. We used the advantage of this technology to, um, to put a whole segment of blades into this. Another business case is um, from the service or from the infrastructure. Here you see our um, handrail signs. So this case is a very individual case because as you can imagine on every train station you have something different written on the sign. And before this um, part was milled and uh, by printing it we could save uh, half of the costs. Now I'm talking about our newest part. It's uh, first wheelset bearing cap we've printed. 
And for that part, um, you need a technology where you can print huge metal parts with. So we've printed, and here you see the part as it looks when it is printed um, in wire arc metal deposition. But what you need to know is that uh, with that technology, you always need to um, um, mill the surface or machine the whole surface. So finally, this part looks like this. And finally, um, part where we <coughs> um, where we solved a very critical situation in a very good, uh, very quick time. I'm talking about our um, pitch stops, which are located here. And they are avoiding that a train is um, going to um, or going too strong in the angle when it's in the curves or angle too too extreme. And um, so this is a safety critical part, and um, we made it together with Siemens. So it uh, took us only four weeks for the whole um, for the whole uh, specification process. So that was very very quick. It's not uh, always that quick, but this part is. Uh, but this part shows that you can do it in such a short time. Finally, here you see an overview of all our potentials. It's a little summary um, I was talking about. So at the at the left uh, corner, at the top, you see um, that uh, 3D printing can have the potential of higher availability. Then you have the potential of partial, partial substitute, which means that you can print just one part and don't need to buy maybe a whole system. You can just el el eliminate the part you need and print this. So here, this example is our dust cover, which you can also see on our booth. Um, then, of course, it's obsolescence solutions. Uh, functional integration, which we use for the turbine blades, production from lot size one, saving manufacturing costs I was talking about when I was talking about the handrail signs, and individual solutions. And last but not least, um, it's bi uh, bionic design potentials, but this is at the moment not the focus for Deutsche Bahn. We've started with that topic uh, three years ago. So in 2015, we've printed 10 parts. And in only three years, we raised up to uh, almost 6,000 parts. So we have no idea how these curves will develop. But we are definitely in the strong belief that is, uh, this curve follows an exponential development. and. Um, now you might be wondering how we've reached this big success to have so many parts printed in that short time. <coughs> the way how we identifying um, our parts is a very um, important thing. So in our first attempt, um, we did it with a top-down strategy which means we, we looked in our databases, we made analyzes, but that was not successful for us. Then we changed our strategy and um, used the bottom-up way, which means we try to inv involve all our colleagues. We're talking a lot about this technology. We um, try to uh, inspire the people and think about it. So giving them trainings, giving them presentation, information, um, was for us the very successful approach to get more and more parts or actually to identify all these business cases. And um, so because we want in the future continue exactly this way, I would say we're changing tracks in our minds towards 3D printing for all our DB colleagues. And in the next step, We've planned a DB White employee competition, where the idea is that all DB employees can take part, and they can submit their ideas, and we um, award after two months the winner or some winners. 
another topic which is um, at least more or at least the same important as um, the things I've discussed before or I've talked before is the topic of standards and qualification. So at the moment or the situation was that you need to submit every single part and you need to um, do the standardization process for every single part. But uh, we want to get out of this way. So we developed our own standards and um, start with that two years ago. And in the first idea, we thought, okay, we will do it alone. Make our own uh, um, yeah, standards and qualification. But then two years ago, we uh, got aware of the initiative of TÜV Süd. And uh, last year, we were talking about or we were talking with TÜV Süd about the concepts. We compared our concepts and we started working together and developed um, a common standard together. So in the beginning of this year, we, um, we published this standard. And um, yeah, which you can see on the next slide. And there were also two or there are already two companies which are audited by this standard. And these companies are Siemens and uh, Toolcraft. And um, for auditing, we developed a questionnaire of 270 and 250 questions you need to get through to get audited. And uh, at the moment, it looks like that at the end of the year, there are three more companies or there will be three more companies audited. And also, we uh, try to bring this topic on a standards international level. So we are um, working on a DIN spec, which is a German standard. And DIN spec is one step before the real DIN standard. And um, when we finish that one and publish, the idea is to publish it in next year, we want to bring it on the ISO level, so on the international level, level in the uh, joint groups. And now I'm coming to the, to the final <laughs> changing of tracks, because what we also learn from working together with Siemens and Tufsud and also with Daimler, we work together in these standards is that uh, it's very important to change tracks for networking. So Deutsche Bahn initiate the uh, um, international leading network for industrial additive manufacturing, which is mobility goes additive, and Stephanie was talking about before. And within mobility goes additive, we have eight working groups. And um, so you can see here, it's the approvals working group, the digital supply chain, the legal frameworks, IT and blockchain, education, materials, ecological sustainability, and change management. So we're talking more or less about all topics which are super important for additive manufacturing. And for me, myself, very important is the materials working group since uh, I'm leading this one. And uh, in that working group, we decided to split up the group in six focus groups, which is elastomer printing, market needs, um, metal development, testing methods, high performance polymers, and a specification group. Because with increasing the technology in additive manufacturing, the numbers of application um, races, but also the materials and the um, yeah the the requirements. So we Deutsche Bahn give uh, 3D printing the green light, and um, additive manufacturing profits from implementation. It doesn't necessarily have to be bionically optimized uh, components. Just using competent um, print, print service suppliers. That's what we did at Deutsche Bahn three years before, and now we've printed 6,000 parts which are traveling with us. Thank you so much.